All right, so we're getting closer and closer to starting to work in two dimensions. Um, there's another concept we need to talk about before doing so, and that's unit vector notation. Uh, unit vectors convey only direction, and you may have heard i hat, j hat, and k hat before. Well, these these are unit vectors, and they just tell you what direction your vector is in. So it can be <clears throat> quite quite of a pain to say a vector of magnitude 3 meters at 45 degrees to the x-axis and it could also be difficult to say a vectors whose x and y components are 1.73 meters and 2 meters respectively we can express this more elegantly using the unit vectors i hat j hat and if we're working in three dimensions then k hat um, the unit vector i hat just refers to the x-axis the unit ver vector j hat refers to the y axis and the unit vector k hat refers to the z axis now don't get intimidated by this third scenario here that's just when you're working in three dimensions and unit vector notation actually makes working in three dimensions just as easy as working in two dimensions it's not any harder at this point it's a very elegant way of describing the position of your vector So when you draw a graph here yeah, you have your x and y right and let's say we have some vector coming out at some magnitude we'll just call this vector v here and it was extended some degrees above the axis and we know from previous videos that we can that this is nothing more than the addition of the x component which is vector v cosine alpha plus the addition of the y component vector v sine alpha we know that this is what comprises vector v but without unit vector notation we still have to say uh, vector v is v cosine theta in the x direction and v sine theta in the y direction whereas really I could just call the whole thing v cosine alpha i hat plus v vector v sine alpha j hat and it's much easier this way so let's draw our little diagram here <clears throat> and we have the x direction and the y direction we'll include the negative sides here so unit unit vector unit is one these vectors, these unit vectors, have a magnitude of 1. All they're doing is telling you the direction. So, if you have some vector actually extending in this direction, when you draw your x and y components, which the x component will be here, and the y component will be here, this x component is the i hat right this is going to be negative the the i hat here is going to be negative let's just for to make it to where we can do the example it's still vector v and uh, alpha for the angle so this is going to be negative vector v cosine alpha i hat so that's telling us it's in the negative i hat direction and i hat's one so it's not really changing anything all it's doing is saying hey it's on the this is the vector on the x axis and it's going in the negative direction that's all it says then this uh, y component vector here vector v sine alpha vector v sine alpha this is going to be j hat and all the j is doing is telling you it's up in the y direction it that's all it does because remember these are unit vectors I could take anything and multiply it by one and I still have what I started with so let's do a quick recap of that last few minutes so unit vector notation a unit vector it's gonna have a magnitude of one meaning it doesn't really change anything but it's going to convey which direction we're talking about so there's three different types of unit vectors we'll be dealing with. One is i hat. There's i hat. 
one is j hat and one is k hat now a quick note is they don't have to be called i hat j hat k hat this is the way they should be called this engineering notation but if if it's really too much for you that way and it's much simpler just for you to think of it as x hat y hat and k hat then then that or uh, and then z hat then that's fine but just keep in mind that sometimes that might get confusing with your other variables if you're already dealing with a bunch of x's and such uh, you don't want to forget that you have a hat on top of it and go adding and multiplying because it's only there to convey which direction you're talking about so we will not be using these three here as these are just as easy to remember IJK goes alphabetically and it there's it will not get confused with any other any other quantities so these are the best way to go for it and this is referring to your X the I hat the J hats referring to your Y and the K hats referring to your Z so let's take a look at another example in this example we're actually going to describe where something is at in three dimensions so this is our x-axis our y-axis and our z-axis you could imagine this as a corner and a wall here and then so I could tell you where anything is in this room that I have here uh, by describing how far it is in the x-direction how far it is in the y-direction and how far it is in the z-direction from this corner in this wall or our origin so imagine you have some particle right here which actually extends down to this point and at this point X so if you try to imagine this three-dimension particle just floating here in this uh, in this example well if you knew this was one two three four five units out in the X direction and this you you determined you say hey I want this to be positive X well then this here this component of where the particles position is at is just gonna be for I hat <clears throat> now okay so that tells me it's four units on the X axis in the positive direction but that only tells me one third of the story what's the rest of the story well, this particle, you could, you know, one, two, three, four. Oh, it's also four direct, four units of whatever it may be in the J direction. And this is positive over here. So we're going to make this four J hat. All right. And then on top of that, now we have to describe. So we know where, how far it is along the X axis. We know how far it is along the Y axis. But we still need to know how far along it is in the z-axis because it could be anywhere on the z-axis right now. We haven't described where on the z-axis this point here is. So let's say this was 3 here. Okay, so this would be 3. So our particle is this many in the z-direction. And if we consider this positive, we don't have to. We could consider it negative if we want to. Uh, you usually want to choose your positive and negatives to what's easiest. So if this is positive direction, then here we would have 1, 2, 3, 3, k hat. So I could describe the position of the particle as 4 i hat. One second. I could describe the position of this particle as 4 i hat plus 4 j hat plus 3 k hat so if you were to ask me okay so where is this uh, floating ball in this room uh, in respect to this corner in the wall this origin I would say well it's 4 i hat 4 j hat and 3 k hat that tells you 4 in the x 4 in the y and 3 in the k you've done this before and if you were to describe this point using uh, point notation or whatever it would be called it would be 4 comma 4 comma 3 in other words it would be your X followed by your Y followed by your Z alright so this is another way of writing it 4 I hat plus 4 J hat plus 3 K hat 
Yes, in this uh, scenario, it doesn't really tell us that much, but at the same time, uh, it's a it's it's a very useful way of describing uh, your vectors, as we'll see shortly. All right, so we're running out of time in this video, so I want to do one quick example about describing vectors in unit vector notation, and then I'll try to make a video uh, coming soon where we go a little bit more into it and just practice describing vectors in unit vector notation. So here we have some vector, and it's one meter in magnitude, and it's 45 degrees above the x-axis. So we have x and we have y, and these will both be positive. Okay, we'll make this the positive direction. And this vector here, this position vector, is one meter in magnitude, and it's 45 degrees above the x-axis. So we know that this vector is the sum of our x component and the sum the sum of our x and y components. So we use some basic trig to determine the sides. Uh, this is going to be 1 times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2 meters, because that's the units we're in. And this other vector, this y component vector, uh, it's going to be the 1 meter times sine of 45 degrees. The sine of 45 degrees is also square root of 2 over 2. So square root of 2 over 2 meters. Now if we were to describe that in unit vector notation, it's going to be, this is the i hat direction, the x, and the y is the, k, uh, the j hat. So I just say square root of 2 over 2 meters i hat plus square root of 2 over 2 meters j hat. And I have just described it in unit vector notation and you'd know exactly how far in the x and how far in the y direction this vector really is. Thanks for watching.